In this video, we'll work through another example. Uh, in this case, we have a damp spring mass system, and we will come up with a solution in the same way. As you can probably guess, there's going to be some more algebra to do because of this first derivative term. So this is a damped spring mass system. And the way we approach it is the same way we approached the previous problem. We're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. And you're going to see that we're going to have to take the Laplace of a second derivative and the Laplace of the first derivative. On the right hand side, I'll have the Laplace of zero, which we know from the previous problem is zero over s or just zero. Here I have to take the Laplace of the second derivative plus three times the Laplace of the first derivative plus 25 times the Laplace of y. So the Laplace of the second derivative we know is s squared times the Laplace of y minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero. Now for the Laplace of y, I'm going to have plus three times the Laplace of y prime is s Laplace of y minus y of zero. And then I just have plus 25 Laplace of y equals zero. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to substitute in my initial condition. So I know that this whole term right here is zero. This is going to be negative one y of 0 is 0. And so I can proceed to now uh, isolate the Laplace of y. So I see I'm going to have three Laplace of y functions. I have one here. I'm going to have three s Laplace of y here. And then I'm going to have 25 Laplace of y there. This uh, plus 1 that I get here, I'm going to subtract over to the other side. So I have s squared Laplace of y plus 3 times s times the Laplace of y plus 25 times the Laplace of y. And then again, this is going to be a minus a negative 1. So I'll have a plus 1 on the left. I'll subtract it to the right. And now I can do my step where I factor. I probably should have used a double arrow here to indicate that these are equivalent lines. And then here I will have uh, s squared Laplace of y plus 3s Laplace of y plus 25 Laplace of y, from which I can factor out L of y. And it leaves me with s squared plus 3s plus 25 equals negative 1. So already we can see here that uh, what we've collected here is a quadratic function. And that quadratic function is going to need to be, uh, the square will need to be completed on that. So when I divide that over, I'll have Laplace of y equals negative 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 25. The reason I need to complete the square is because, again, we do not have a Laplace transform or an inverse Laplace transform that includes this 3s in there. And the one way to get rid of that is to complete the square. And if I complete the square, I am going to come up with negative 1 over s plus 1 and a half squared, or you could write that as 3 halves, um, plus 91 fourths which comes out to 22.75 if we want to write it in decimal form. And that's going to equal, that's the Laplace of y. So I already recognize this. Uh, this looks like the Laplace of e to the a t times sine of b t. And we know from our Laplace table that that is b over s minus a squared plus b squared. So in the denominator, I have 22.75, but that's the square of b. So if I square root it, that will be the value of b, but then that obviously changes the answer. So I can leave this as the square root of 22.75 squared. 
which means I want this to be the square root of 22.75. I need the, the numerator to be the same as the square root of the denominator. So uh, I'm going to use my multiply by one trick. And what that will enable me to do is to write this as the square root of 22 points. Let me move this over a little bit. Laplace of y equals, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the square root of 22.75 and divide by it simultaneously. That's my multiply by one trick. And now when I invert the Laplace, I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to multiply the top by 22.75, factor the negative one out, so that when I take my inverse Laplace, let me write one more step just to make this perfectly clear, Laplace of y equals negative 1 over the square root of 22.75 times, um, I'm going to move this, I'm going to basically commute these two values, I'll put 22.75 under the radical in the numerator, over s plus 1.5 quantity squared, plus the square root of 22.75 squared. So I can now see that my b value is the square root of 22.75. I have that in the top and bottom. I have a minus a there. All right, so I have minus a here. So, oops, same color, that's not gonna work. We have a minus a here. So to get a minus a down here, I, I know that uh, this can be written as s minus 1.5 or s minus negative 1.5. So my a in this case is going to be negative 1.5. So that is the negative of the 1.5. And now finally, I can say that, that the inverse of both sides will now lead me to my final solution. So in my last step, I'm now just going to write, well, those cancel out because those are uh, Laplace and inverse Laplace are inverse operations. So I'll just end up with y equals negative 1 over the square root of 22.75 times the inverse Laplace of the square root of 22.75 over s minus negative 1.5. The only reason I'm writing it as s minus negative 1.5 is so that you can see that this is my a value. There's my a value because now this and this both have the form s minus something. And finally, I will have plus the square root of 22.75 squared, which comes out to, okay, so my a value is negative 1.5, so this will be negative 1 over the square root of 22.75 multiplied by e to the negative 1.5t times the sine of the square root of 22.75 times t. And I'm done. Now if I had done this with the old method, which was to create a guess of the form y equals e to the rt, and then y prime equals r e to the rt, and then y double prime equals r squared e to the rt. And to, when I would solve for the value of r, I would actually end up with a complex number. And that's with those complex numbers, then we would know that that's an exponentially decaying sine or cosine function. But the beauty of using the Laplace transforms is we never had to go into dealing with complex numbers at all. All of the inverses took care of it, which made, even though it, there's a lot of algebra that takes place, our final solution, which is y equals, uh, let's see, y equals uh, this whole thing here, That is our final answer. And let me just box that in.
there's our final solution, which worked out to be really quite nice uh, in comparison to having to deal with the complex number system. If, however, our uh, let's say our just our initial condition for y of zero changed to one, that would make things a bit more complicated um, because at this stage we would we would still repeat everything that we've done up until this point. It's the exact same problem just with a different initial condition for y. You could appreciate how much more complex our solution process would have to be. So this is what we came up with up to this point, but now our y of zero is no longer one, uh, no, no longer zero, it is now equal to positive one. So if this is equal to positive one, then I'll still end up with similar, a similar process, but instead of having Laplace of y times s squared plus three s plus 25 equals positive, uh, negative one, I actually have to move over the negative s, negative s times one, which will create a plus s term over here. Now when I divide by s squared plus three s plus five, I get Laplace of y equals negative one over this thing. And remember, we're gonna have to complete the square on it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. s plus 1.5 squared plus 22.75. But then I have this plus s over s plus 1.5 squared plus 22.75. And this will still invert the this will still invert into the same answer that we had up here. But what I'll also have to do is now we'll have to do that add zero trick. So to add the zero, remember, because I if there's an s in the numerator here, I want to have s plus 1.5 in there as well. So I'll have negative one over s plus 1.5 quantity squared plus, and I'll just go ahead and write this as 22.75 under the radical squared. And then here I'm going to have to do the add zero trick. So I want that numerator to be s plus 1.5, but it's not. So I have to add zero. And the way I'm going to add zero is I'm going to add the 1.5 that I want, but then I also have to subtract it away because if I don't, then I'll have changed the problem. So this minus 1.5 will branch out into a new term. So Laplace of y equals negative one over s plus 1.5 squared plus the root of 22.75 squared plus s plus 1.5 over s plus 1.5 squared plus the square root of 22.75 squared minus 1.5 over s plus 1.5 squared plus the square root of 22.75 squared. So this one I already know the inverse of. When I go to inverse both sides, and I'm just going to say, okay, let's say we've already inverted it. This will, this term right here will come out to the negative one over the square root of 22.75 e to the negative 1.5 t sine of square root of 22.75 t. This one here will come out to cosine uh, e to the at e to the negative 1.5t times cosine of square root of 22.75 squared, I'm uh, sorry, 75t. And now I have to, again, do the multiply by one trick on this. So if I factor out the 1.5, I need that numerator to be a square root of 22.75. So I'm just going to jump the gun here and say that this will work out to be e to the negative 1.5 t sine of the square root of 22.75 t. And the last thing we could do is we see that we have two like terms. So here we have negative one over the radical. Here we have negative 1.5 over the radical. So my final answer will look like this. And here it is. So all I've done here is I've just combined those two uh, terms since they're identical, like terms and that becomes negative 2.5.
Uh, so a little bit more algebra, but still no complex numbers.